The web is incredibly exciting because it is the, the fulfillment of a lot of our dreams that the computer would ultimately not be primarily a device for computation, but metamorphosize into a device for communication. What Steve Jobs described in this clip from 1995 did indeed happen. The web has surpassed even the wildest dreams of the computer visionaries from the 90s. And now I believe that with ChatGPT and OpenAI's coming releases, we go full circle. Because what's happening is the true metamorphosis from computation to communication. In this video, we look at the progression from personal computers to personal AI assistants. We also look at ChatGPT Retrieval, which is currently the top trending GitHub repository, and we discuss the implications of these breakthroughs. What's funny about this Steve Jobs clip is how he continues after his entry statement. Um, and secondly, it's exciting because Microsoft doesn't own it, and therefore there's a tremendous amount of innovation happening. I wonder what the guy calling the computer a bicycle for the mind would think about the AI revolution playing out in the hands of Microsoft. I very much agree with this statement. It's an absolute crime that we don't get to see what Steve Jobs would have done with AI at Apple. But speaking of Microsoft, its founder Bill Gates released an article titled The Age of AI Has Begun just a few days ago. I'm certainly not a fan of Bill Gates or Microsoft in general, but you have to acknowledge that he shaped the field of personal computing like few others. He makes a few statements in his piece that might convince you that my reasoning in this video is not so crazy after all. In my lifetime, I've seen two demonstrations of technology that struck me as revolutionary. The first time was in 1980, when I was introduced to a graphical user interface, the forerunner of every modern operating system, including Windows. The second big surprise came just last year. I knew I had just seen the most important advance in technology since the graphical user interface. This realization came to Bill Gates after meeting OpenAI and when he got a presentation of GPT. And honestly, I felt the same way when I started using it. I mean, I made a video literally titled Why ChatGPT clearly is the next big thing. But I'd like to add a few more revolutionary steps into his timeline. A timeline from computing being very inaccessible and hard to use, to computing being ubiquitous and so easy to use you can basically talk to your machine. Personal computing started with this thing. You needed to assemble the machine yourself. And needless to say, you needed to be very tech savvy to make use of this tool. Shortly after, the basic programming language is released. Programming your PC just got a little easier. MS-DOS of course needs to be part of this list and then the first modern graphical user interfaces, whereas the Macintosh was particularly innovative and easy to use. I would put the World Wide Web as the next major milestone because now communication leveled up tremendously and you can access resources that are not on your machine, namely websites. From here I'm going right into the iPhone and smartphone revolution, which put computing right into your pocket. Computing is now everywhere and with the release of the App Store there is an endless list of easy to use applications. As you can see from this progression, every step of the way technology got more user friendly and more easy to use, meaning technical knowledge to operate these tools became less and less relevant. And so we arrive at the present. We are witnessing the next major advancement as we speak. ChatGPT or GPT more generally or even AI interfaces to make it even broader. I'm going to explain why this is such a big deal and why I think that you haven't seen anything yet. Soon, the pre-AI period will seem as distant as the days when using a computer meant typing at a C prompt rather than tapping on a screen. In my previous video, I argued that the ChatGPT plugins extensions have a chance to replace parts of the classical web browser. They neatly integrate into the chat interface and will likely perform any sort of task in the future once enough third-party applications have been built. But that's not all. I want to focus on how AI can be your personal assistant more generally. One of the most interesting integrations is Zapier, which lets you connect ChatGPT with over 5000 applications without writing any code. What I find even more impressive, however, is the open source retrieval plugin, which enables ChatGPT to access personal or organizational information sources with permission. It allows users to obtain the most relevant document snippets from their data sources, such as files, notes, emails or public documentation, by asking questions or expressing needs in natural language. This is like your personal secretary, managing your email inbox, scheduling meetings, summarizing documents, etc. It's the number one trending GitHub repository right now and I can see why. 
The new suite of Microsoft applications might be able to showcase some of this potential. So far you only have a co-pilot while coding, called GitHub Copilot, which by the way, the next iteration of it looks completely insane. And now you get a co-pilot for every possible work task. Emails, sheets, presentations, documents, whatever. There are many apps out there that claim that they are a second brain to you. But I think that this ChatGPT retrieval plugin or the embedding of it will come closest to that experience. And looking at this as just a secretary doing organizational and time management tasks for you is not thinking big enough. Think about it this way. Imagine you have a junior developer, lawyer, content writer, analyst and much more at your fingertips at almost no cost that also understand your business. What would you build? When the tools of production are available to everyone, everyone becomes a producer. No-code tools have already helped non-technical founders to build great applications. Soon, ChatGPT and Copilot X can be your technical-minded co-founders, so that you can go even further. I see three major revelations from this fact alone. First, productivity of those who use the tools will skyrocket, and it will be impossible to compete without them. Secondly, Solopreneurship will become ever more feasible and more popular. When you have a team of junior assistants in the cloud and manage them efficiently, you will be able to create a vast amount of businesses without a single co-founder or employee. And third, this might be the most important takeaway in my eyes, ideas are more important than ever. The toolset efficiency and accessibility just got leveled up. It's still up to you to come up with great ideas and execute them. As it gets easier to build things, more people will build things. Great ideas are the differentiator. There are already quite a few memes out there about developers thinking they need to find a new job as they will be replaced. And while I do agree with the sentiment in the face of current announcements, I would still take the complete opposite side of this opinion. I think there is no better time in history to become a developer, because you can now create what you envision 10 times faster. I'm really happy recently that I took the time to learn how to code and my head is full of ideas of what to create. Most of them are really bad, by the way. But anyway, we entered a phase where I think putting in some extra effort to learn the tools before everyone else does can be huge. AI is like a new platform with different APIs you can build on. It's like the early days of the web or the launch of the App Store. People who saw the opportunity got rewarded. So this was me essentially riding the hype train for the last few minutes. I think it's time to get some nuance back into the discussion. Here's why I'm not bullish on OpenAI slash ChatGPT. Circa 2016, every corporation was obsessed with chatbots, thinking that it would be the new UI for the web. All these experiments failed. In the end, consumers did not want to chat to get things like insurance or holidays. They wanted to be presented with a list, explore and make a decision based on their own judgment. I think humans will always have an innate distrust of technology. And no matter how algorithmically perfect you can make a manufactured response, it will not substitute the desire to browse and explore for oneself. I'm not sure I fully agree with this, but it's not a bad take. The major reason for these experiments failing could well be that the UX and capabilities of said chatbots was simply not good enough. I do however think that the second part of this statement is interesting to think about. This actually goes back to Steve Jobs once again. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman shared the following anecdote on the Lex Friedman podcast. A story that has always stuck with me, I don't know if it's true, I hope it is, is that the reason Steve Jobs put that handle on the back of the first iMac, remember that big plastic bright colored thing, mm -hmm. was that you should never trust a computer you shouldn't throw out, you couldn't throw out a window. Nice. And of course, not that many people actually throw their computer out a window, but it's sort of nice to know that you can. And it's nice to know that like, this is a tool very much in my control. So the innate distrust into technology and especially new technology is prevalent here. I believe there is a set of functions that ChatGPT does better than anything or anyone else and a different set of functions that I would rather do myself. This could progressively change in the near future, as the pace of improvement is remarkable in the whole field of AI. I'm lucky to have been involved with the PC revolution and the internet revolution. I'm just excited about this moment. This new technology can help people everywhere improve their lives. At the same time, the world needs to establish the rules of the road so that any downsides of artificial intelligence are far outweighed by its benefits, and so that everyone can enjoy those benefits, no matter where they live or how much money they have. The age of AI is filled with opportunities 
and responsibilities. One of the greatest opportunities lies in the coming ChatGPT third-party apps, the code interpreter and the browsing plugin. Check out this video next to understand why they are such a big deal.